What's good, everyone? Thank you for stopping by and listening to the Clemson and Notre Dame review. I am a man of my word, as I said in the preview, that I would own up to being wrong about picking against Notre Dame if they were to beat Clemson. I picked Clemson to win 28 to 24, and obviously, it did not happen. So in the comment section below, tell me what was your takeaway from the game? And if you haven't done so already, click the like button because it helps the channel grow. Click the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you won't miss out on another video. Now, let me go ahead and get started. This was game of the year quality between Clemson and Notre Dame. I thoroughly enjoyed it so much that I'd want to get a second helping and I'm sure everyone else would too. This was arguably the best win in the Brian Kelly era. This easily tops the Oklahoma win at Norman in 2012. And there's just a lot to unpack in this game. Now, first off, Ian Book played the game of his life and Notre Dame emptied the chamber against Clemson's defense. Notre Dame did not go into an offensive shell. They were aggressive and they were aggressive early in the game. And I think that took Clemson by surprise. I mentioned this in my game preview about one of the keys for Notre Dame was for them to take smart chances down the field. Coming into the game, Ian Book completed six passes that were 20 yards or more downfield this season while attempting 14. In the Clemson game, he attempted eight passes that were 20 yards or more downfield. For some unknown reason, Clemson has struggled with teams who took vertical chances against them this year, and Notre Dame won more than their fair share of one-on-one -on -one matchups with the ball in the air. Also, Book's legs played a big part in their victory. Clemson did get home at times, but Book was able to scramble to avoid the rush, or he was able to extend the play and find someone downfield. And he did not hold on the ball long when he was in the pocket. Clemson had a sack rate of 5% in this game, and their defense was averaging a 10% sack rate per drop back this season. Kudos to that Notre Dame offensive line for keeping Book upright, and they held up well against Clemson's front, albeit it was depleted, but still, they held up well and Clemson recruited well throughout the years. As far as Ian Book goes, I think I am on the hashtag let book cook campaign for only one week. Now, here's the sick part about this. I still think Notre Dame left some points on the board. Clemson held them to 3.7 points inside the 40 yard line on seven attempts inside the 40. Clemson's defense did their job inside the 40 yard line, and it had a feeling early in the game that this would shake out like it did against Ohio State in the Fiesta Bowl, where they kept the Buckeyes out of the end zone. But Notre Dame kept their poise and they kept plugging away. Now, I would be remiss if I did not mention this. For Clemson, DJ Uyangalele is a special talent. This kid is going to be a nightmare when he gets some seasoning under his belt. And he played admirably in this game, man. Uh, you have got to give that kid credit. In his second start, 50% passing success rate, 439 yards, which is the most yards a quarterback has ever thrown against Notre Dame, by the way, and three total touchdowns. This kid is going to be a problem. That slant throw in overtime was borderline illegal for a kid his age to be able to make that throw. He has just as many 400 yard passing games in his two starts as Trevor Lawrence has in his entire career. That is absurd, guys. Clemson going from Deshaun Watson to Trevor Lawrence, and now they got this kid, DJ, who is going to be a stud. If only Georgia, where Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence went to high school, and USC, where DJ went to high school, if only they were able to keep those quarterbacks home. Just think about that for a second here. Now back to Notre Dame. Notre Dame's defensive front, folks, they're legit. And Clemson's offensive line is not the powerful front we witnessed last year. And I'm not going to mince words here. Notre Dame's defensive line flat out beat up Clemson's offensive line. 
Clemson's offensive line averaged a paltry 1.2 line yards per carry, and they allowed 35% of their carries to be stopped at or behind the line of scrimmage. Let me repeat that for you. 35% of Clemson's carries were stopped at or behind the line of scrimmage. That is a jaw dropper. Clemson could not push Notre Dame's front and allow ETN to break into that second level. Clemson's offensive line was rendered, oh, I'm sorry, and their running game was rendered ineffective. And I cannot remember the last time I said that about Clemson's running attack. Notre Dame's front was ridiculous last Saturday. They came into the game allowing 77% of their opponent's rushing averages. After this game, they're now at 69%. This rush defense is for real. Anytime you hold Travis Etienne to less than 30 yards rushing, you had an outstanding game. And the last thing I'll mention, Notre Dame, they won the middle eight. And that is something Clemson prides themselves on. And I'm sure you're wondering what is exactly the middle eight. The definition of the middle eight is the eight minutes in the middle of a football game. It is the last four minutes of the first half, as well as the first four minutes of the second half. Hence, middle eight. This period from the game is often overlooked, yet it decides a lot of games every weekend. It also decides games in the NFL as well, too. From 2014 to 2019, in FBS play, the teams that won the middle eight, they win 74% of the time. At the power five level, that win percentage goes to 76% of the time. In this game, there weren't any points scored in the middle eight, but Notre Dame had a higher success rate in the middle eight than Clemson did, having a 40% success rate to Clemson's 38% in the middle eight. I mean, there's a lot to unpack here, but hats off to the Irish for their first win against a number one ranked team since Florida State in 1993. It is the breakthrough win Brian Kelly was looking for in his program, and it was the win Notre Dame fans have been waiting for for as long as I can remember. I had this game as a 74% postgame win expectancy for Notre Dame. I think ESPN had it at 48%. And if you want more advanced box scores like this, make sure you follow me on Twitter and I will try to accommodate your requests. And as I leave with every video, thank you for watching and thanks for visiting the channel.